Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to tackle the first section of chapter eight about polygon angles. On the screen, you'll find your exit question for the day. The first thing that we're going to start off with, as with most chapters, is some vocabulary. Now, you have actually seen each and every single one of these vocabulary words before, but I thought I would remind you of what they are, and I tweaked the definition of convex and concave to what you had previously seen so that it might make a little bit more or a little bit less sense. You have a very good visual representation of what you know a convex shape is and a concave shape is, but these official definitions are wordy and difficult. So uh, take a look at the new one. Uh, a convex polygon basically means that there's no indentation into the shape whatsoever. Now the official definition for that means that if you take, if you choose any two points inside the shape and draw a segment between those two points, that that entire segment should be contained entirely within the shape. Now a concave polygon, by contrast, if you choose, you should, you should be able to draw at least one segment such that its endpoints are in the shape, but some portion of that segment falls outside the shape. And then remember your definition for regular polygon, which is equal angular and equilateral. Also remember that we can refer to any polygon by the number of its sides. So if you wanted to name a polygon with 20 sides, you could call it a 20 gon. If you wanted to call a triangle a 3 gon, you may. The next vocab word I have is probably not new to you, but here's the official definition. Uh, the diagonal of a polygon is a segment that connects any two non-consecutive vertices of a shape. Now, they have to be non-consecutive because they want to span over the interior of the shape a little bit. Uh, so, in, for instance, I could not connect B to C or B to A. That would not be a diagonal. Uh, it would just be the side of the polygon instead. The next vocabulary word that I have, there is a word definition in the book if you're interested in, but I think this picture says everything that you need to know. The interior angle of a polygon are the angles on the interior of the shape. The exterior angles, which are slightly more complicated, come about from extending one side of a polygon and that supplementary angle to the interior angle is the exterior angle. Now that may seem fairly obvious on a nice regular convex pentagon sitting right there, but I want to show you that the same holds true for something a little bit more irregular like this star shape here. We still have exterior angles and interior angles and what's even cooler, so the exterior angles are labeled in pink, the interior angles are, angled, are labeled in green, and what's really cool about this drawing is you can still see that these two angles, the interior and the exterior, are still supplementary. Um, that fact that interior angles and exterior angles form a linear pair will be useful to you. The next thing that we want to talk about, now that we know what an interior angle is, is we want to talk about a polygon and see if we can come up with any sort of pattern about higher order polygons. So we know a lot about triangles. Now we're going to start working up in number of sides to figure out a whole bunch of interesting things about shapes. And the first thing we want to start off with is interior angles of any polygon, not just a three-sided polygon. So we know that the sum of the angles inside of a triangle add up to be 180 degrees. And I'd like to figure it out for any polygon whatsoever. So I'm going to start with a pentagon. And I'm going to start where I know what I know. And that is with triangles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pentagon and I'm going to split it up into triangles. I'm going to do that by drawing two diagonals, one from one vertex. It splits the, the whole shape into three triangles. Then I'm going to label each of the angles of each of the triangles. So lots of labels, but in each one of those smaller triangles, you notice that all the interior angles add up to be 180 degrees. So A plus B plus C is 180, D plus E plus F is 180, and X plus Y plus Z is 180. Now, if I wanted to find the total interior angles of the pentagon, the large shape, I would take A 
plus this angle, which is C plus F, plus this angle, which is E plus Z, plus this angle, which is just Y, plus this angle, which is made up of three adjacent angles, X plus D plus B. And I would add those up together, and that would get me my total sum. Now, the other thing that I mentioned in there is that we know everything about A, B, C, D, E, F, and X, Y, Z taken separately. They each add up to be 180 degrees. And if you notice in this giant equation that we have down here, we have X, Y, Z all added together. If we just remove some of these parentheses, rearrange stuff, I could get this to be X plus Y plus Z. I could do the same thing with D, E, and F. I could rearrange them so they just look just like that. And I could also rearrange A, B, and C so they looked just like this, which means that I can substitute in uh, 180 degrees for each of those three variables. So I'd get 180 plus 180 plus 180, which is 540, which equals the sum of the interior angles. Now that's all well and good, but we know that the interior angles of any shape can't always be 540. We know this because for a triangle, it's 180. So there then must be some sort of pattern, or hopefully there is a pattern talking about low order polygons to high order polygons sides with a few sides polygons with a few sides and polygons with a lot of sides so let's look at a lot of shapes and see if we can tr try to figure out a pattern uh, by the same construction so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take all these shapes and the ones on my screen happen to be regular but this will work for anything regular it'll even work with non-convex shapes which is kind of cool uh, but I'm going to do the same construction. I'm going to split each shape into triangles. I'm going to draw diagonals from a single vertex. Now, if we apply the same reasoning with our pentagon, the pentagon, we had three triangles and we had 180 plus 180 plus 180. Well, a quadrilateral has two triangles and a hexagon is made up of four triangles if we slice it up like this. And a heptagon is five triangles. Octagon would be six. And I believe this is called a dodecagon. Would have 10 triangles in it. Which means that if we added up all the interior angles here, we would have 180, 2 times 180, 3 times 180, 4 times 180, 5 times 180, and on up until we got to 10 times 180. And indeed, that is the pattern. And that is your theorem for the day. The sum of interior angles. So simply stated, the sum of the interior angles of any n-gon, a polygon with n sides, is you take however many sides it has, you subtract 2 from it, and then you multiply that by 180. So you'll see that very highlighted equation right there, or expression right there, that you will use to find the sum of the interior angles of any polygon. So if you have a 160-sided shape, you plug in 160 for n, and let the calculator do the rest of the work. Immediately we get a corollary. Uh, and remember, a corollary is an immediate result. If we talk about a quadrilateral, that's 4 minus 2, which is 2, times 180, which is 360. Also, if we think about the exterior angles, this is kind of a cool demonstration that is in the book, uh, where all the exterior angles are highlighted in different colors, and then we just pull out the shape. Uh, pull out the shapes and all the lines that constructed that polygon with, and we look at all the angles and then we rearrange them so that they are touching uh, all vertex to one point. And you can do that, and they completely fill in a circle, which means that they all add up to be 360 degrees, all the exterior angles do. And what's really cool about that is that will occur with any polygon of any sides. So any polygon whatsoever its exterior angles add up to be 360 degrees. And that's theorem 8.2. And that's all theorem 8.2 is. It just simply says that if you add up all the exterior angles of any polygon, it will add up to be 360 degrees. So let's take a look at a specific example. Here we have a regular 16 gon, and I would like to find the measure of one interior angle. If you think you can do that right now, right away, pause the video, see if you can work it out and come back. So there's a lot going on here. 
and very little information. You're told that you have a side with 16, a shape with 16 sides. You are told that it's regular, and remember that regular means equal angular. So if I can find the sum of all the angles together and then divide that by 16, because there'll be 16 angles, I'll be able to find the measure of just a single angle. And that's the general process here. So we use our little formula. 16 minus 2 times 180, which is 14 times 180, equals the sum of interior angles. Now, sum of interior angles itself, uh, we're going to introduce some new notation for you, because I don't want you writing that down every single time. It's way too many words. We're going to let that symbol stand for it. S, big S, with a subscript I. S sub I. So S I stands for the sum of all the interior angles, and we could do a S with an E as a subscript for the sum of the exterior angles, if you wish as well. So do the math and you get 2520 equals SI. And then we know that it's regular, so it's equal angular. So that means that we'll just take our sum and divide it by 16 to get the measure of 1 16th of the interior. Now we can make these problems slightly more complicated by adding algebraic expressions instead of actual numbers. So here's an example of a quadrilateral uh, that we can solve for, to find the value of x. We know that all of those sides should add up, or all of those interior angles should add up according to our interior angle sum, which means 4 minus 2 times 180 equals 360. Or you could have used a corollary since this is a quad. Uh, and then simply add them together, and they should equal 360, combine like terms, and solve. You can understand that those could become more difficult if I, say, gave you a system of equations or a quadratic in there. Try doing this one yourself. Go ahead and give it a shot. Okay. If you've did, done all that correctly, there's a variety of ways to do it. You've got a lot of ver vertical angles going on here. You've got a lot of linear pairs here. Um, I was able to to, fi to figure out why eventually you, you got W and X. You can get W through a vertical angle and X through a linear pair. And then you've got one, two, three angles out of the four. So the fourth one must make the total 360. And then once you have that, you've got a home run. Your assignment will be out of the workbook, and I'll see you in class.